Hey, good morning, everyone from uh, ODARK 400 in California. Um, today, we have a panel of a few people, and we're going to talk about microblocks experiences around the world. I have with me John Maloney, Jose Garcia, and Peter Matheson. And we only represent a small fraction of, of the people who have been touched by microblocks around the world. So we're going to deliver mostly a presentation based on photos and some short videos just to give you a taste of what's going on. And what we really need from all of you is how to bring more of these experiences outside of the uh, outside the norm, you know, workshops and things like that, and how to kind of keep keep pushing and keep trying to to drive this into all the normal educational curriculum of all the public and private schools around the world. That's definitely one of our goals is reaching as many people as possible. Okay, so we're just going to go through I had really good intentions of putting all sorts of these experiences on a map and I really didn't get very far so um, we'll just go through the panelists myself john Jose and Peter and not going to talk too much about microblocks but just talk about the types of things that we've been doing with microblocks so i'm over here in california john's on the east coast near in cambridge near boston and peter's in the netherlands jose is of course at city lab Turgut is in turkey he's not with us today and then there's a sprinkling there should be a smiley faces all the all the rest of the world <laughs> but um, i just sprinkled some around if you haven't checked out microblocks, go to microblocks.fun. There's even a virtual hardware similar called Bordy that you can run uh, through a little app that runs in your browser. So check that out. It's really not as fun to run a, a virtual hardware. You really gotta, really gotta pick up things like these. For example, I was just teaching a workshop yesterday with these Circuit Playground Expresses and other hardware. So check out the website. The the, this next graph on Chrome app growth doesn't really reflect the number of users, but it gives you an idea that over time, yes, we have been building uh, mindshare. We have been uh, picking up people as we go, and we need your help to get it into the hands of more educators. Like I say, I'm, I'm not a core educator teacher, but I'm trying to help teachers, and I try to do workshops just so I can experience how well microblocks works and what what we can do to improve it. Um, but more teachers teaching teachers would be great. So this is myself, Kathy Jory. You can find my email, Twitter, LinkedIn, almost everything. I'm on uh, Discord, things like that. And know at the end of the presentation, we have a QR code and we have the links for our Discord server where you can talk to us directly uh, on chat. And I'm going to go through a series of workshops and experiences that I've had, and I'm going to share some experiences and workshops of other people, and then we'll go on to the other three panelists. So it started for me many years ago, and we started actually not with, before Microblocks was fully baked, we started doing these snow pixel projects in San Jose every Christmas, and they're Christmas ornaments that just had seven NeoPixel LEDs and a microcontroller behind it that the kids could program. And that was pretty fun because they got, we had, we had college students that were volunteers, just the picture on the left, soldering them all together. And then we had like middle schoolers um, actually programming them. So in the years 2017 was the first year we had the snow pixels out for over, over a month actually in Christmas in the park. So they have to be outside and during the elements. In 2018, we put together this whole array of snow pixel or snow flakes with pixels in it. And some were controlled by music and some were controlled by uh, the, the microblocks programmed elements. And then we had them attached to at the time this web things gateway, a Raspberry Pi, so that I could sit there with my laptop, like in the lower right hand corner, and I could actually control it wirelessly um, to change the patterns and so forth. Then, uh, so the snow pixels, except for COVID, have been going on almost every year. This year, there was, in fact, an ESP32 based one. So, again, you could use it wirelessly. And I'm hoping to engage in some sort of open hardware design so you can plug in multiple microcontrollers and still have this classic seven pattern array that we developed in the very first year. 
the other big way that I've been spreading microblocks available, you know, the the access to a better physical computing STEM education through using things like microblocks and microcontrollers is through a program I've been participating in for since 2018 called Tech Women. It's funded by the U.S. Department of State, techwomen.org, if you're interested. And I've every every year they bring women to the Silicon Valley Bay Area in the month of October. I host them in my house, the emerging leaders that come from 21 different countries in Africa, the Middle East, Central Asia. I am actually hosting a fellow from from Nigeria in my house right now who helped with a workshop I did yesterday. And uh, every opportunity I have, I work with them and it's really, I'll show in some other slides, it's really paid off. They've started to pick it up and use it in other parts of the world. So here I am training other mentors, other emerging leaders, and then in 2019, right before COVID, in the spring of 2019, so like a year before, I traveled to Uzbekistan as part of the delegation. And I met this young gal who was very brilliant. And I just like, I handed her a micro bit. I showed her micro blocks. I said, you go girl. <laughs> I taught a couple of workshops there. The most challenging one was the one down in the lower right corner where it's a independent area of Uzbekistan where they speak Karakalpak. And I had to translate they had to translate from English to Russian and then Russian to Karkalpak to, to reach these, these students. And then this year I had a chance to go back to Central Asia and based on my connections, I again visited Uzbekistan, taught uh, younger adults in the IT park, a middle school where they spoke English, so I didn't even need a translator, which was really nice. Uh, I went to a middle school, Bilim Khanna in Kyrgyzstan and also a high school, a kind of a pre-college, and then also a universities. And everywhere I went, people pick it up. They have a lot of fun. They greatly appreciate it. And the word gets out. And we get volunteer translators. So they translate to Uzbek, to Kazakh. And here I am in some college prep school. And I really find it's important to catch people very young, as young as possible and then show them role models of women, of a diversity of people using technology. It's, it's not just a stereotype. Anyone can learn this and have fun. So that was in, when we went to Kazakhstan, we visited two cities, Almaty and Astana. And in Astana, there's a American Corners Makerspace. We left donated hardware in all these different places I went to. And they're already using that donated hardware within, like within two months, they had this, this Kostane, which is a rural region of, of Kazakhstan, where they were already using microblocks and the Pico bricks uh, kits that we left behind to teach a workshop. And one of my former emerging leaders, now a fellow, she's based in Morocco. She was here last fall. She's already written a book, engineering students book, that uses the curriculum micro showing microblocks for everything instead of make code, even though she uses the micro bits. So she's already published a book, which I find fascinating. It's awesome. So that's Fatima. Then um, just, um, well, a few years ago, I started helping a friend at the uh, Society of Women Engineers Get Set program. And that happens, it's a summer camp, a one week long summer camp where uh, high school girls, freshmen, sophomore, juniors and seniors I'll spend a week at, at a, uh, San Jose University. So 2017, 2018, it was actually led by a friend of mine. And then in 2019, which I didn't have pictures for, I, I picked it up. 2020 was online because of COVID. And then I have pictures starting last year. I'm not gonna show, but this YouTube video shows the girls trying the clap counter and making actions happen from it. And then just yesterday, I had a full day workshop at uh, Santa Clara University again. And uh, Rahana, who's an incoming high school computer science and maker ed, and, and Binta, who's here from Nigeria, just visiting. And then all the girls in the classroom, there were 25 girls. You can see they're ready to go. And they just had, again, a ton of fun. And it's normally, these girls are underprivileged schools, so they don't have computer science. When I asked who, who had done Scratch before, like one or two hands out of 25 raised up. Like they literally had no pro prior programming experience and they had no problem picking up microblocks and making all sorts of fun lights and patterns and coming up with good problems to solve. One, 
One used the light sensor to detect if someone and, and put, would put her cell phone on it and then would, would detect when the light was uh, much brighter and then she would fire off an alarm. Um, I've done this summer camp in San Diego a couple of years ago. I've done, uh, even in my workplace, you know, with, with professional engineers and embedded Linux development and so forth, I've taught these workshops with microblocks for ornament making around the holidays, and they all loved it. They all absolutely had a blast and were very creative in, in, in making. So any age is appropriate. One thing we're particularly proud of is Wenjie Wu, one of the you know, STEM education advocates and volunteers, and then he works for an ed tech company in China, and he's collaborated all over China, such that now they've translated the whole Microblocks website to Chinese. You go to microblocksfun.cn, hosted in China, so they don't have the firewall problem. And to my surprise, they're hosting like sharing events every Saturday online, live sharing events about Microblocks. And there's a whole website that is dedicated to these kind of meetups online. Uh, very cool projects they're doing, like they've developed on the left here, these food delivery robots that were part of this challenge. There was these toy cars, uh, LED backpacks. They've done uh, integrations, Wenjie has with Roblox, so you can have these online games and hop around and light the LEDs and change the colors and it shows up in the real world. There's a competition in the summer where they've had hundreds of teams and students and for the second year they've been using microblocks, which is quite impressive. Uh, they really keep the translation of, of Chinese in the microblocks IDE current. They um, have shared a whole bunch of pictures with us. It's a, it's a fabulous looking competition. And uh, obviously that these competitions have pushed you know, pushed Microbox even further and better because it has such challenges of timing and so on. And here I'm about to wrap up. So John, get ready. I'm going to stop my share soon and, and hand it off to you. But Turgut um, Gunize, who's in Turkey and his one, he, he mentors uh, Murat and they showed us one of the demos one day where they took the Husky Lens Library and walked around and I think it was a McQueen robot and did all sorts of recognition and action. So it's going on like in one-on-one -on -one, um, things as well as in, as in other uh, places. So this is just, just a touch, just a snapshot of some of the experiences I've done and seen. And I'm gonna hand it off now to John Maloney to, to give his experiences. So I'm gonna- Oh, great. Sharing. Actually, Kathy, why don't you keep, the, keep, you your, keep... keep sharing and I'll just say when to change. Okay, I'll do that. That'll be quicker and easier, I think. Okay. Um, so next slide. All right. So this is me. Uh, everybody probably knows me. Um, this is, uh, Kathy put the slide earlier in her presentation, but um, this it's interesting that uh, uh, this year we had a big growth in microblocks. Um, it was doing really well for some reason in 2021, 20, 2021. Um, that was the year, I guess, the pandemic started, uh, then it tailed off, and then the next year it was low, and I think that's because schools were really busy. I should say that this is just the Chromebook stats. We don't have good stats for other uses of microblocks, uh, but Google keeps these Chromebook stats. Um, uh, but after the sort of pandemic year when schools were pretty busy dealing with that, uh, it's really taken off, and you know we've reached uh, over 10,000 weekly users um, of Chromebooks, and 90% of those are in the U.S. I don't think the rest of the world uses Chromebooks that much, um, but you know that sort of gives you a sense of how much uh, microblocks usage is out there, and that you know that doesn't include all the use in the browser, downloaded apps, etc. Next slide. Um, I've been doing a bunch of things locally. Not, I'm not as active as Kathy at giving workshops and stuff, um, but I've been collaborating with the local uh, library here in Cambridge. And um, some of the things we did was we had a microbox activity table at the Cambridge Science Festival. This was like, uh, this was just a one day thing and people could walk up and try microblocks. And it was actually amazing, like how many pretty young kids got into microblocks. 
uh, they would sometimes, you know, their parents would help them write little scripts um, and they would be tickled pink by just having like they push a button and it would make a little tune play or push a button and a little animation on the screen. Um, uh, and then some high school, uh, junior high, well, maybe, yeah, probably jun middle school kids came by and they were in a computer club um, and they were, you know, it was like, oh, well, that's just for little kids. And then I said, well, you know, uh, you can make games in, in, in microblocks, you know. And so one of them sat down and they spent half an hour that the other two or three of them were like standing behind him, suggesting things for him to do. And they, he made a little game in, in half an hour. And finally we had to kick, kick them off because we wanted other people to be able to use um, that, that station. Um, uh, I've also done some hands-on electronics classes with fourth graders, not using microblocks, but um, that was really fun. Uh, it's amazing how exploratory fourth graders can be uh, they, and, and how fearless, like, you know, they would just try everything. Um, and then finally, at the end of the school year, we had this uh, set of events called the CS Playground, where microblocks and several other um, uh, other groups, like some from MIT and so forth, set up these tables. And all the sixth graders in four different elementary schools got to try microblocks. Uh, so they bring in like, you know, different sets, different classrooms um, and cycle them through. So that was pretty cool. Next slide. Um, uh, in the summer, I've been doing these uh, uh, teacher professional development programs. I used to uh, do them with Pathfinders, the Infosys Pathfinders um, Institute. I did a couple of those, um, maybe three. Uh, the last couple of years, I've been actually sticking closer to home. There's a, a organization called CS for MA or CS for Massachusetts uh, that's um, free professional development for Massachusetts teachers in CS and STEM fields. Um, so last year we did uh, two full week classes with the micro bit. And uh, this year we're only going to do one class because last year it didn't seem like there were quite enough teachers to, to really fill two classes. So we decided just one this year. Um, but I'm looking forward to that. That's in two weeks. Um, thanks, Kathy. Yeah, next, next slide is good. Um, <laughs> I actually don't have any pictures of, peop of people working on stuff from, from Robolot, but as most of you uh, folks from the City Lab know, um, we get to get, we've been getting together once a year in Olat, Spain, which is an hour and a half drive or two hours drive from Barcelona, uh, and the SNAP team, the Microbox team, and uh, uh, Turtle Stitch this year, SAP, lots of people, you know, kind of get together and we exchange ideas, we present things to each other, um, we work on projects together. Uh, this past year, there was actually a double rainbow, which was really cool. Um, and we went on a hike, so there's a picture of Olat from the distance from, from a mountainside. Uh, so that, that's, that's a fabulous, oh, and we also present microblocks. We did like three workshops at the Robolot conference, which uh, is scheduled around the same time. We've been partnering with a number of educational robotics vendors. Um, for a long time, we've been working with BirdBrain Technologies. Tom Lowers from BirdBrain uh, was at the very first OLOT when Microblocks was brand new and one of our, our first supporters. Uh, recently, um, through, through uh, um, uh, through Turgut, who lives in Turkey and speaks Turkish, uh, we started this collaboration with a Turkish company called Robotistan, and they're the makers of the um, uh, of the PicoBricks board that you saw in some of those pictures from Kathy's visits to uh, to the uh, <clears throat> Uzbekistan and other places in Central Asia. Uh, we also started this year um, a collaboration with Let Freaks in China, and that's uh, partly through Wenji Wu, who's um, uh, collaborates with us pretty closely. And uh, so Electfreaks is um, the thing on the right where it says Microblocks Programming, that's from their website. They're now promoting Microblocks for some of their products that are based on the Raspberry Pi Pico. And I think that's partly because there isn't another good blocks language for that. So there was a little opportunity for Microblocks to get in there before, you know, um, uh, since MakeCode doesn't support it. Um, so they're actually pretty happy with that, and I'm hoping they just released a new kit that is going to have all the all the projects in microblocks, and I'm hoping that that grows. Um, from our standpoint, these collaborations, the good thing about them is that um, it's a way to get microblocks out to more people. People are buying these products, and if they're if they support microblocks and they prominently 
promote microblocks, then that gets more people using it. We also often get companies to donate uh, hardware to us. So for example, the hardware that T Kathy was giving away in Robotistan was all donated by, uh, sorry, in Central Asia was all donated by Robotistan. Um, a couple of new things that we're working on um, is uh, the data bot, which is a cool, it's sort of a microcontroller designed for instrumenting science. Uh, so it's packed with sensors and uh, that's made by a guy in the US, I think in Nebraska or Idaho, somewhere up in that part of the country. And uh, through him, they're going to send microblocks up in, not quite in space, but in the, um, what used to be called the Vomit Comet, the zero G airplane that astronauts use to train. And, and uh, a teacher's going up in that, and we're gonna instrument her pulse and the air pressure and um, acceleration and stuff uh, with, with a data bot and collect data and then you know, be able to analyze it afterwards. And finally, Roger Wagner, um, who's been uh, working with Glenn Bull at uh, University of Virginia for years, and he's made several sort of products for helping pe people do STEM. Uh, he has a new product that he's working on that I'm excited about called the Maker Port. And that's going to be a like a $50 thing, which is a microcontroller, uh, but with lots of things that you can plug in and some built in things like an MP3 player. Um, so he's really been thinking about how to do activities in classrooms for a long time. And the maker port is, uh, you know, sort of optimized for the kinds of things he, he's doing. Uh, so those are some of our collaborations. Um, a uh, thing that I did spend a lot of time doing um, this past spring was mentoring for a class called Robots That Make a Difference. And the theme of this class is sort of assistive technology. So students build things like um, on the left, uh, we see uh, uh, sort of a walking robot. Why does this not play? Oh, Kathy, you have to click it. <laughs> Um, and then the center, there's uh, one of the students is explaining how it works. And on the far right, there's what you're seeing is a, a little robot driving around on the floor. Um, what you're not seeing is that it's being controlled by uh, a head mounted controller that's using the accelerometers. And this was designed for there's actually a, a real person named Chris, uh, who's a quadriplegic and he talked to the class about his problems controlling his wheelchair. So this uh, was an attempt to make a better control system for wheelchairs for quadriplegic people. Um, I think that's my last slide, so we can turn it over to Peter. Jose, sorry. Jose, do you want me to Hi. share the slides or do you want to? Uh, you, uh, can you pass the slides, please? Okay. Oh, you want me to do the slides or do you want to? I, I say to you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm Jose Garcia from, uh, I stay here in City Lab. Uh, yeah, I'm now in the online part of the conference, but uh, these days uh, I have the, I am happy to host this. This conference and uh, now we will present some experiences that we have uh, with microblocks. Kathy, please, uh, next one. Um, this is uh, maybe one of the first workshops uh, made, uh, I think, made with uh, microblocks. You can see the the microblocks uh, screen is uh, very, very old. It's in 20, 2018. And this is a, this is an, uh, a workshop that the, we be make here in City Lab. Uh, the idea is to build a widget. Uh, it's a simple thing. Uh, we, uh, you can see uh, we are working with a micro bit. And I think we don't have uh, uh, micro block cars uh, in this time. Uh, it was uh, a crazy workshop because uh, micro was uh, in the very beginning stage of uh, this the, 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 of developing. And I think we will uh, we help to solve some uh, uh, books. Okay, <laughs> you can see some um, people uh, from, this is in a summer workshop uh, and, and the people, uh, 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 we have people between uh, eight and uh, uh, 15 years. And also we also work with, with families. Okay, uh, next please, Kathy. Um, 
this is in 2019, and you can see the uh, ED1 uh, board that uh, we made here in City Lab uh, uh, and the fantastic robot. And this is in to the schools. So There's a project we have in schools in Cornelia. Uh, we go to this school and we teach a program in our robotics to use in the regular curriculum of the school. Okay. Those are uh, girls from 11 and 12 years. Uh, they are um, in charge for building and programming the robot to give to other, uh, other uh, students in the in the school okay we do more project like the but the more projects there, especially with uh, scratch and snap but this is the project for, for all the uh, ages in the uh, in the school because this robot can be used like a bbot uh, to uh, go with our uh, board uh, no sorry uh, carpet and uh, work with objectives uh, as very precise because has uh, stepper motors. This project also, we did some, some workshops in Panama. I forget to put that uh, in 2020, <laughs> okay. Next, um, uh, this is the workshop we presented here in the SNAP conference. And this is the, um, the workshop about Plex, uh, EA and robots. Uh, you can see that uh, the blocks are not micro blocks, it's snap, but the robot is programmed uh, in, in micro blocks and, is, and can communicate with snap uh, with the Signada protocol, it's a wet socket server. And in this, uh, uh, and in this, uh, in this, you can see a family because uh, I say before, you, we were also with families and they, they, they are very, very young. Uh, the father here, uh, need to help uh, a lot to uh, to do the worship, but uh, we like to have this kind of worship because uh, 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 we love uh, uh, that families uh, can share this uh, the, this knowledge and it's a, a fun way to contact with technology. Uh, it's the same worship we did here in the SNAP conference. Next, please. Um, this is an interesting workshop because it's uh, in the Meet and Go to initiative that uh, Christian says uh, at the beginning of the conference, we apply, uh, ah, it's, uh, it's 2020, sorry, the, the, the first round is 2022, sorry. Uh, last year we apply and we have a nice workshop uh, because uh, the idea is um, um, I was only for women. Uh, we have uh, uh, girls from 12 to 14 years, okay? And the theme for the workshop wa was to build a lighter sculpture uh, related to the uh, uh, woman uh, um, in general. Uh, you can, uh, not necessarily uh, woman in touch, uh, every, uh, Women that they can uh, have a an sculpture to to represent uh, this. We have a sculpture from for Frida Kahlo from um, I don't remember from um, equality between women and, and men. And and this is also you can see there here the the scratch the sorry the microblock cars and we, we have a lot of material to build these life sculptures you can see all the, all the activities you can see videos uh, in the youtube uh, channel of city lab ah and nina is putting in the in the chat says to me uh, okay and this is the last oh the sorry the 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 year is wrong it's 2023 <laughs> sorry and this is the lab which we we are doing uh it's uh, about camouflage animal camouflage and uh, i like a lot of this photo because it's the grandson and grand uh, parent uh, doing the workshop uh, it's like a device that's um replicate the color of the environment into uh, that glasses okay uh, and is entirely made in microblocks and uses a standard color sensor. And we will the glasses, bracelets, and devices to to represent this uh, 
this thing about animal camouflage. And I think it's all. And Peter, do you want me to stop sharing? No, keep keep going. You are doing okay. a great job. So uh, my name is uh, Peter, and I'm from the Netherlands. I'm a Coda Dojo champion. I'm not supposed to see. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. And I don't know if anybody of you know what Coda Dojo is. It's, it's a worldwide movement where we teach children uh, from seven to 17 how to program. It's all done by volunteering. And in the Netherlands, uh, in, in Tilburg, where I live, we started again in the COVID uh, pandemic with Coda Dojo. So we had our first uh, dojos uh, online. And then we had our physical dojos. And most of the children in the Netherlands um, knew Scratch. So a lot of things that have, are happening on the, uh, during a dojo is Scratch. And there is, uh, as far as I know, is a, a law in uh, the Netherlands that children have to, uh, they, the schools have to teach them uh, digital literacy. So it's, it's a law, but a lot of schools aren't ready yet. So when children come to us, sometimes they don't know anything, they know scratch. And I'm always uh, very busy with searching for block-based uh, languages like scratch, like snap. So I discovered uh, microblocks and you can show another slide if you want, uh, Katie. And so I discovered microblocks, and it was as exactly what I was searching for. It was uh, fast, it was live, it was small, it worked on anything from uh, a Mac, Linux, and even uh, a Raspberry Pi. You can you can uh, run it anywhere. So when I started uh, doing uh, microblocks, and that the kids discover you, you can see it on the next slide. Even very young children, uh, they started using uh, microblocks with a micro bit, and I didn't have to teach them or tell them that they could just unplug the micro bit. They just knew. So even if they didn't work with Scratch before, they, I guess, they were thinking by themselves it has to happen this way, and it did. So they they put a lot of blocks on the screen. They followed my tutorial. They unplugged the micro bit to run through the room. They went back, they plugged it in, did some more editing, and it just worked. And I saw multiple children that were able to do it that way. And we have a lot of big uh, meetings. So there are a lot of people who are getting uh, yeah, enthusiastic about micro blocks. Um, uh, yeah, it's in the next slide. We went to Tilburg University, the Knight University Junior. We had a table there. The most of the, the children you see in, in the photograph are playing with Scratch, but we did a presentation and we had a table filled with uh, micro blocks and microcontrollers. So I talked for three hours to children and parents about micro blocks. So I don't know if you can see that in your graphs, <laughs> but uh, it was very busy. Um, in February, we went to FOSDEM. FOSDEM is a gathering of open source developers in Brussels. And I wanted to have a dev room where we would only talk about educational programming languages. So together with Katie, we organized the dev room and uh, Microblox was there, Snap was there, Turtle Stitch was there, Zim Yes was there, App Inventor was there. So we had a great time, and now we're hoping next year we have uh, more time and more space to do uh, a microblox uh, presentation and let children play with all the microcontrollers we can bring. We also had a stand. You can see um, falls them. The most uh, of the visitors are adults, but uh, a lot of the visitors bring their children with them. So on our stand, I brought my little uh, uh, car. It was the most favorite part of the stand. A lot of children just picked it up. I told them to put it on the floor and press the A button, and then it started working. So it's, uh, yeah. 
it's uh, it's a lot of fun to being able to spread the word on micro blocks. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so just like this slide says, Peter, thanks yeah. for putting this in there. We want you all to, to continue to reach out to your community, point them to the website. We, we I'm definitely behind in putting learning projects on our learn portion of the website. And then there is a Discord server where you can chat with us live. Um, you know, bring us suppliers, you know, let you let your hardware know suppliers know that you want something that runs microblocks. I've I've become so, I don't know, jaded that I only want hardware that runs microblocks. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just not interested anymore. Me too. Yeah. So 